Assalamu alaikum viewers, this is Farheen Chaudhary with Minerva. Today's personality is well known to all of us and even at the international level. Air Chief Marshal Kaleem Sadat. Though he is retired, but still he is working for a think tank of Air Force and I think a very good example for all Pakistanis as a person, as a human being and as an army officer. Let's talk to him, let's talk about his inspirations, his uh, dreams and his work for Pakistan. It's, uh, it was really, uh, I'm, it's a pleasure and I'm grateful to you that you have spared some time uh, and it was very difficult to talk to you and reach to you. Uh, but since you had been always very humble and uh, very kind uh, to be with the public in different functions, in literary functions and many things. So uh, I just wanted to know that which book inspired you uh, a lot? Because a lot of people say that they read Flam Flam book, they read and they are here today on this post, on this status. They gained, they were inspired certain books. So which book inspired you the most? Uh, from my very young age, I was in the habit of reading. Mm -hmm. When I was a young officer, we used to go on temporary duty. We used to get TADA. Uh, what I used to do was that I would buy books with that mo extra money that I got. So uh, from a very young age I was fond of reading. We had a good library at our school and I used to get a lot of books. But at that time one dwelt on fiction. Uh, one read books that were on fiction etc. It is towards the later part of my life that I realized that history, uh, philosophy and non-fiction uh, was more important to life. Uh, so there are many books that one read, but I was most impressed by a very simple book written by Dr. Edward de Bono. Uh, it is called Textbook of Wisdom. Okay. And uh, what inspired me most was that right in the beginning, in the preface, he admitted that he had written this book over four days while he was on holiday in Bermuda. Great. And in he four said, days only. In four days. How is it possible? He was lying on the beach throughout the day and there he wrote this book. This book is only 110 pages. Mm -hmm. And on one side of the book there, are, there is text which is not more than 15-20 lines. And on the opposite page there are sketches, there are drawings, there are doodles in which he tries to explain the text that is written on the opposite page. It means a pictorial book. Yes. Kind of. Uh, he tries to illustrate his point that he's making in text by doodles and by diagrams, by sketches. So what he tries to do is what... Uh, the message is very clear. It is very simple and it is very clear. He says that in life we try to convince the other person through logic. And we try to fight him, we try to quarrel with him, we try to argue with him. He says, logic makes no sense uh, to people. It is the perception that matters. Exactly. How, how one views anything, uh, this flower uh, vase that is lying over here appears different from my side and, and it's the same vase and, and different from my side. So his message was that we must narrow the gap between perceptions hmm. uh, of people if we want to bring them around to your own point of view. Uh, and the second uh, important message that he said was that the biggest hurdle to wisdom uh, is certainty. Mm. Uh, he says that never use the word never, ever, always, everyone. They don't block the thought process. Yes. yes. It always says sometimes, mm. maybe, mm. you know, uh, words like this which, which leaves room for, uh, you know, going back. Going withdrawing back from your exactly. stance, you know, mm -hmm. not quarreling with people, not, uh, you know, uh, being conflictual. So these were the things that in real life uh, that mattered when you dealt with people, when you dealt with groups, when you dealt with opinions. And as luck would have it, uh, he visited Pakistan during the time of General Musharraf. Mm -hmm. He went around lecturing universities. Uh, so when he came to Air University, the uh, rector at that time, he was obviously known to me uh, and he knew my uh, fondness for books. 
so he told Dr. Dubono that you know our air chief, uh, I was at air that time the air chief. Time, yes. uh, he is fond of you because I had read his other books also. Mm. And uh, would you like to meet him? He says, yes, why not? So he came over to my office uh, and we had sat down, had a cup of tea. Uh, so I talked to him. I said, this book of yours is very good, but there's a problem with its title. Mm. Uh, he smiled. <laughs> he says, yes, I understand. I said, because if I want to uh, gift it to somebody, because it's a nice book, uh, if I want to gift it to somebody, he would think that I am thinking that he is not wise. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So that uh, uh, so that denies me an opportunity to gift a good book to somebody exactly. who I who is a good friend. And actually, I uh, thought that I would give it to General Musharraf. You know. <laughs> but, so did, did you? <laughs> I, I did. I did uh, uh, in a diplomatic manner. I sent it to him, uh, uh, and he says that every book that I write. Mm. I uh, gifted to Prince Philip first because he is known to me, he is a friend, you know. Mm -hmm. And he says that when I wrote this book, I had the same difficulty, <laughs> that I was a little reluctant to give it to Prince Philip. Our viewers, uh, ACM is talking about his favorite book, textbook to wisdom. And I can see whenever I meet him, I talk to him or when I see his lifestyle, I definitely can say that he's learned a lot from that textbook of wisdom. Stay tuned to DBTV. See you after our break. <music> Mr. ACM, I would say uh, you learned a lot of wisdom from that book and from life as well. Life itself is a textbook of wisdom. We learn a lot from our personal experiences. Why did you join army and especially air force? Was there some dream to fly in the airs or to serve nation or whatever? Uh, well, my father, I was a bright student when I was young. Uh, as all parents of that time, my father wanted me to become a doctor. <laughs> and still many parents want the same. Uh, yes. Yeah. I wasn't too keen. Uh, mm -hmm. And the reason was, and my father asked me, why don't you want to become a doctor? Mm -hmm. I told him that I don't want to live amongst the sick all the time. You know, a doctor always is in hospitals, he is sick. Uh, so I, I was not too keen. Uh, and anyway, one day I was standing uh, at the first floor in my home. I saw an Air Force bus pass by. And it was, uh, it had an ad or a panel on it which said, join the Pakistan Air Force. And it had this big F-104 uh, picture on it. So uh, I thought this is the career that I want to adopt, and so I applied for it the. It was a second decision. Uh, second decision. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I mean that uh, picture was very inspiring. Attractive. Uh, uh, and uh, inspiring. Uh, so the next course uh, that there was an ad in the newspaper for PF Public School Sargoda, mm -hmm. I applied for that, and I uh, was selected. Uh, but the condition in that uh, selection was that I would join the Air Force uh, after, uh, if, when I complete my education over there. They made us sign a bond. I signed that bond, not that I was, uh, uh, they forced me into, I was volunteering, but I signed that bond. So when I completed my senior Cambridge uh, education, I went for ISSB, I went for CMB, and I was selected, and from there You on. never repented for your decision? Never. Never, never ever, never. you stay. I was very fortunate. In fact, mm. uh, 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 having seen Pakistan, having dealt with everyone, uh, different bureaucracy, lawyers, judiciary, business, every other profession that I I think that uh, anybody who joins the Air Force and wears a blue uniform is a privileged person. Uh, we, uh, the Air Force has a different ethos. Mm -hmm. It has an ethos of uh, truthfulness, of uh, being direct, of being accessible to your subordinates, etc. And if you said, uh, if you think that something was right and you uh, told your boss or somebody in higher position, he would accept it willingly. There is no element of protocol that, you know, just because you are the chief, a flight lieutenant or a squad leader cannot talk to you. That I can see in your attitudes and your behavior overall. 
when I is it uh, it's all, all the same for uh, other forces as well or only for the air force because in other forces at times we see the typical protocol and all that uh, other forces are different mm. uh, uh, so uh, air force is unique in this respect mm. and the reason is uh, also the way the service works because uh, the uh, the air war or air battles are fought by young pilots you know mm -hmm. they are the arrows of the air force you know that pierce the enemy's heart etc so uh, he has to be listened to mm -hmm. you know what he says uh, carries weight what he says holds value what he says must be respected you know and so uh, uh, that is why he's provided access uh, all chiefs when they go to the bases uh, they have an open house you know where the uh, the all pilots get all officers can come to uh, yes, they can come they can come and, and they can speak directly and you got the same kind of uh, interaction with the public and the civilians as well or not yes yes uh, viewers uh, we are talking about uh, acm's professional life stay tuned to dbtv let's meet after a break okay uh, mr acm uh, you have seen the world world in that way that you've got lot of experience being a chief marshal of pakistan and a lot of things must be under observation which a common person can't see can't perceive can't foresee so what do you think uh, what is the future of pakistan all the time we are worried all the time politicians are making us scared and we are always worried what's going to happen to pakistan what what could be the future of pakistan so what do you say uh, it is a sad uh, story uh, this 23rd march i was talking to some youngsters mm -hmm. and they said that uh, the uh, ispr made a very good milli nagma you know pakistan zindabad so just to engage him in a discussion uh, i asked him i said why is it that we make so many milli nagmas why i why are we scared about our future you know mm -hmm. I, i go out across the world i don't see any uh, of this thing going on in any other countries that milli you know uh, that they make milli nagmas and they want to sort out the enemy and they, why do why are we so insecure mm -hmm. uh and uh, he had no answer uh, to my this counter question mm -hmm. uh i personally think that we try to reassure ourselves mm -hmm. you know through these millions we are not confident we are not confident inside in, yeah. in, inside we are not confident mm -hmm. so we try to reassure ourselves by making these uh, uh milli nagmas on these special occasions mm -hmm. and uh, which i actually think is not really necessary they are motivating you know the poetry that goes on is very motivating i mean if uh, if you look at our kamitrana mm -hmm. you know and if you go at the wording i mean it is amazing it's amazing How, it's no amazing doubt. the music and everything not not yeah. the music the words the words sai ai khudai zul jalal mm -hmm. tarjuman pakistan shan e hal you know all these words carry immense amount of meaning mm -hmm. and if our leadership mm -hmm. only concentrated on these stanzas mm -hmm. and derived their motivation from even that even one line if even one line even one line even yes. one you know yes. parcham hai sitara aur hilal you know rehbari tarakki ho to rehbari tarakki i mean it's a fantastic piece of poetry mm -hmm. and a fantastic piece of thought that has gone behind uh, this and national and a very motivational thing and of course the music yes. is very nice mm -hmm. so uh, uh, and one needs to do a little bit of introspection as to what is the meaning behind this mm -hmm. you know and and if that drove our actions you know uh, we would be in a much better place unfortunately it hasn't happened yes. it hasn't happened uh, uh, so that is the sad part what what we uh, what we need to do is first of all we should have affection for our fellow citizen that is missing that is what makes a nation mm -hmm. you know when i will say that i he has my maximum respect because he is pakistani mm -hmm. not because but we are divided into uh, uh, different linguistic and racism no and no uh, not as a as a human being mm -hmm. we don't want to 
respect the other person as a Pakistani. We don't show any affection. Why is there chaos on the road? Mm. You know, mm. we want to break into the path of another guy who is going in his lane. Exactly. You know, mm. because we don't value that person. Mm. We don't want to respect that person's right mm. to have his space on the road. Mm. We want to bar barge in in front of him, which is a very sad. Why do you, it is the stress that is caused, the, uh, is because of this. Mm. Elsewhere in the world, if you are going in your lane at, in your speed, nobody bothers you. So your driving is stress-free. Here your driving is so stressful that you have to think, what time should I get out of the house that I will have minimum stress? And it is said that you can, under, you can guess, you can gauge a nation, how much civilized yes, it exactly. by its traffic. Yes, absolutely. And uh, very unfortunately, we don't have a good traffic uh, rules and sense. Very good uh, being uh, an air chief, you can check the traffic over the space in here as well and in the ears. Hey, this, this was something about your personal thing. Now, uh, I want to know about um, what kind of family you belong to. It's very personal, but uh, just for the new generation, for the new Pakistani children and the new generation, that normally it's thought that the people who are too much privileged, they go up, they go high. And uh, as I talk to so many VIPs, they belong to very humble families, but by the say reading books, getting inspiration, having good teachers and good environment and good thoughts, good perceptions. Today they are sitting somewhere, you know, they are the VIPs. So was your family uh, helpful or it's all your own personal achievement? No, I, I belong to a not a very well-to-do family. My father was not uh, a very rich person or he uh, was in the police. And uh, uh, my mother died when I was very young. Mm. Uh, and uh, but uh, right from the beginning, she what I, I remember is uh, she taught me uh, at home. You know, uh, I used to go to school also, but I went to the school later. Uh, uh, I remember when I was very small, because my mother had taught me, I could read English at a very young age. Uh, we were going from Faisalabad to Kamalia on a wedding. It was my uncle's wedding. Mm. And we uh, stopped at, there is a place called Rijana, mm. you know. Uh, we stopped for a cup of tea in the morning. The Bharat stopped. And uh, they, this was, this hawker was roaming around with Pakistan Times at that time. So my uncle uh, called this guy. He said, bring this newspaper. You know, my nephew can read this newspaper. Okay. I, I was what? Six years or seven years, Great. you know. Okay. So he brought, and every the whole Bharat got together, mm. and uh, I read them out a few lines from the newspaper. You must be feeling very <laughs> proud. <laughs> so, so these guys were amazed because they were all my uncles. They were all farmers, etc. Uh -huh. You know, and they were not educated and all. But the people. You were the hero out. at the time. <laughs> so, uh, so my family uh, had, uh, but my father. You know, he kept us in Faisalabad and wherever he was posted, in whichever police station, he would go there and... Uh, but he laid importance on education. Uh, and uh, so, uh, I used to go to school, my sisters used to go to school and we were, mashallah, good uh, in studies. And then, of course, I got selected for PF Public School, Sargoda. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there on, never looked back. Uh, fortunate. Uh, why we are privileged? Uh, I say I am privileged that I got to go to PF Public School, Sargoda, and then ultimately in the Air Force, where merit mattered, nothing else mattered. Mm -hmm. You know, when I became the chief, the whole family would come with Safarish with this guy and that guy. And I used to tell them, please, for God's sake, don't do Don't do line my uh, Do, things. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told you to tell them that I have made the chief because any, without any one of you knowing anything about the Air Force. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody, I never asked anybody for a safarish, I never asked for a recommendation, mm -hmm. never asked for a letter, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, this is how the Air Force works. Please let me work. Mm -hmm. uh, so, my uh, brother, you know, he would come, he says that, you know, people don't let us uh, uh, Live at peace. Live at peace, you know. <laughs> they keep bothering us. Uh -huh. So what should I do? I said, 
<coughs> you tell them that my brother is a very bad person. <laughs> he doesn't work for anyone. <laughs> he doesn't work for anyone and we have had a fight and now we don't speak to each other. Huh? But I think as you've told me, uh, though you were not very rich from a rich background, but your mother and father help you out a lot to study, to learn things. And I think it matters. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time you spared for us. And uh, viewers, ACM Kaleem Saadat, I don't consider him a retired, though he's retired uh, technically. Such people are always, uh, I would say, uh, what we call it, it's a typical word for it is mashal, charaghe rah, I call it. The people who teach to others, who, who are a, a very good example for their successors, for the new generations. And I'm sure uh, just by listening to him, as I'm, I know him for a lo long time, and always been a very good example for all other Pakistanis. So stay tuned to DBTV for other shows. Goodbye.